Hi guys, welcome back. I've, I've got to talk pretty quiet. I'm testing out new microphones here, see? It's supposed to be noise counselling, but I can still hear Lisa, so they're not that yeah, good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, before I start any turning, I want to say thank you. I missed you out last time. I didn't mean to. It's my fault because I, I forgot to say to Lisa. But um, Wayne Hardy, met you at uh, Newark. Nice meeting you, mate. And I know you donate to the channel, so... <laughs> yeah, finally managed to meet you. So we didn't get a lot of time to talk. You were sort of going by, and I was, I think I was in oh, on the way where, way out. We was leaving, and I had to meet up with someone because I was getting a car full of wood. So we're talking about I'm going to turn a little piece of that today. I'm going to do a little end grain bowl with that. Um, the bowl I turned the other day, uh, I'm not going back to it, guys. It's split here, okay, which I thought it would, um, but I would have parted that off and carried on deeper because I left enough room in the bottom. But See that one there? It's it's cracked right through. It's coming into the bottom. I'm not even going to bother. I don't want a bowl that's got cracks in it. So that, that will just go for firewood. And that's it. Um, yeah, most of the wood I've got at the moment is is a lot of it is wet. But I don't mind that. I'm going to turn, I'm going to do a little ingrain bowl out of this. Not a pot, a bowl. A little ingrain bowl. Uh, I'm starting off with that size. I should part it down. I'm not going to be as deep as that. But you'll see what I do as I do it. Um, and then I'm going to turn a piece of this on a next video. This is some of the sycamore that Peter and Barry Raven gave to me. Now, I've got the big piece, and it is a big chunk that they want me to do with fruit bowls. So I want to try and turn a smaller piece off of one of the other bits first, because it is really wet. You can see this is wet. I don't want that one to start turning out and it starts cracking and things, so I want to see how the wood's going to behave by turning a smaller bit first, because I really don't want to... If, I might have to leave that to dry a little bit. I don't know. I'll see how it goes. Okay, I don't want to do a first turn and then come back to it. And I don't want to do it as a fruit, but I don't want to do it ultra thin. But what I don't want is it to do this. See, this is already warped quite a bit, gone out of shape. It's cracked there. And as I say, that big crack in the bottom, I don't want it to do that because it, it's a shame if I lose the, lose the wood. Keep, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to turn this bit. So I'm going to pop it on between centers. This is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to try and do some, a couple of little short videos. And I'm talking fairly quiet. I've got to talk quiet. If I talk loud, the microphone picks it up so much. So I can talk really quiet like this and say, okay. That's so good. See, I can whisper it when I'm when I'm um, having a pop at people, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I'm putting that between centers first off, okay. I took the bark off of this because the bark will fly. Now this is, uh, I believe, a piece of ash. I've got loads and loads of ash. And it's, it's stable wood, pretty good wood to turn in it, ash really. So I did try a bit earlier with the bark and the bark flies everywhere, so I took the bark off this piece. Comes out very light like that. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one. So stop talking and get on with it, and I'm just gonna turn. Okay guys, I should use a range of tools, bit of carbide, bit of uh, skew chisel, probably hollow it with carbide, being it's end grain, and I'll do the outside. First off, I'm going to do the first bit with my roughing gouge. So I'm going to start that up and step over here, let it spin up. If it's going to come off, I don't want to see it. There it is, it's still there. Right, okay, remember what I always said, back cut first. There we go, that's round. So I'm going to put a tenon on the end, okay? Um, yeah, I'm going to put a tenon on the end. I'm going to have a little play with how I do this. But another point to make, actually, is because a lot of people say, can you use a roughing gouge on a bowl? And it's a big no, 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 no. Well, actually, yes, if it's an end grain bowl, okay? Because end grain, absolutely fine, absolutely safe. On the outside, I'd love to see you try and hollow one with a roughing gouge. Right, I'm going to put a tenon on it, that's what I'm doing. If you're going to try and hollow one with a roughing gouge, please film it. I'm just going to clean that up, and I'm just going to come in, put a tenon on the end. I want the fairly biggest tenon, because this is for grip, this is going to be the top of the bowl afterwards, okay? So this, this is going to be the top. 
So I've just done that so I've got, got a way of holding it in my chuck. So, yeah, you know, it, it gets a bit confusing. And I know people say, well, new turners might make the mistake. But, well, it's no good trying to hide things from people to protect them. You might as well tell them the truth. Uh, learn to identify whether it's side grain or end grain is the most important thing. Like I say, you do have to learn things about turning. You can't just go and do it and take it up and think everything's going to be all right. Because it won't be. So, but if you're turning at, like this is an end grain, then yes, you can more than, more than, uh, safely, more than safe using a, a roughing gouge on it. Yes, perfectly fine. It is still a bowl and you can do it. And what I should do is I'll do a little bit of it with it. Now I'm going to bring the center up because I don't need to have it away from it at the moment. Okay. And yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm using a, a big roughing gouge here, and this is a big one. And no, I wouldn't use this on any normal bowls, but on this, absolutely fine. I can come in and shape the, start shaping round. Right, I'm coming round like that. I'm going to have a foot on the bottom, and I'm probably going to part that off about there. And that would be the top of my bowl. So I'm not using all that wood, you know. So, yes, I mean, move my tool rest in. Remember, if you move your tool rest, don't hit the piece of wood. And if we come in here. And as you can see, this is a bowl. I'm getting a nice shape of a bowl. And using a roughing gouge. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely fine. Right, I'm putting that down because I don't want to be using that. Right, I'm going to put uh, another tenon on the bottom of this one. Actually, I won't use that. But so, I'll do how you can all do with a... I'm going to use a carbide. Clean it up first. I think I want about there and I'm just going to put a little dovetail on it okay that's that right now I'm going to take my skew and just do a little bit of shaping on this I'm going to bring my tool rest up a little bit higher like so now I just want to take a couple of little cuts with the skew just to get a nice clean finish on it That's nice there, right, I'm going to just, a little bit too high with that, I think. Very wet wood. It's actually, clog it, look, I'm getting powder come off, it's so wet this wood. Yeah, it's not going to give a nice finish. Not of a skew anyway. It's a bit wet. Right, okay. I'm going to put a part here. Ready to part that off for where it's going to be. The top of my bowl. I don't want to go right through at the moment. I'm going to take a little clean up cut on that. Because that wood is, is really wet and it's not going to be, it's not really going to be sandable.
Mm, it's not too bad. It's a very wet wood. As I keep saying. Did I happen to mention, guys, this wood's wet? <laughs> right, okay. I should give that another pass once I've turned it around. So I'm going to pop that back. I'm between centres. And I'll carry on part this off. Oops, I dropped it. Never mind. That's all right. It's not finished yet. Right, there you go. This is going to come off of here. Get rid of that. That'll make use for a little jam chuck or something. Might even need to use that for this if, when I turn it around. There we go. Yeah, that's sort of kicking the grain up a bit on that. It's... But we'll get there. We'll, do, we'll use some different tools on that. And that'll be all right. Like I say, I don't want it to uh, sand it. Well, I'm going to take this out of the way. Start that up. That's it. That's good. Right, I'm going to take another little cut down that now I want to go down on that um, what am I going to eat right okay let's come back up with that and I'll go back on my skew and do another little pass with the skew see if we can get a nice a nice finish on it and yes it's It's kicking the grain up a little bit. Right, okay, let's try another. Let's see if we can go with a, a spindle gouge and see if a spindle gouge will give us a better finish on it. It's just trial and error, guys, trying it. Maybe if I can come in with the bevel on it, it might be better. Mm, uh, still... It's still, the grain's really popping up on this. I really don't, I don't want to, yeah, that's got it. Yeah, nice and slow like that. I've just got a little bit here. Yep, that's got it. That's all right. Okay. Right. I'll see what whether that will sound a little bit. Yeah, it will. Okay. Just do a little bit to that. I just want to see what the finish... Oh, yeah, that sounded nice, actually. Yeah. Right, that's it. Oh, that didn't take a lot. It's wet, so there's no point going through loads of grits because it won't make much difference to it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow it. And for that, I'm going to use the, the box hollow, the 9mm. Move this super out of the way.
Remember, we're at end grain, so we want to be coming out, not going in. I'm a little bit high there. That's a bit better. No, it's still a bit high, tiny bit high. Better. I'm going to get my depth. I'm going to get my depth now. Yep, that's about it. Nice, a few little ridges on the bottom there. I'm going to come in and I can get a push cut across that bottom there. Right, so. Yeah. It's just a grain cut in there. That grain there is a little bit bumpy. It's, it's funny, it's weird to say. It's, um, what tool am I looking for? Six mil hollower. Sorry, six mil hollower. I've just come across with that. Still leaving a bit bumpy. It's weird how that grain feels. Oh, really weird. That's alright, that's nice white. I'll come back to this one. I can finish from here. Right, I think I've got a little bit of bulk in that corner there. I want to get rid of. That's better. Nice little bump there, get rid of that. There we go, right, one final pass. Does look funny that bottom on that. It's not lines, it's the grain. Sorry? Yeah, once I stop you'll see it. Right, okay. That's alright. I say I ain't gonna spend a long a lot of time on this, it's just a quick video. Just to show doing a a little wing grind. Right, let me get a fresh bit of paper. I've got no new paper on that thing. It's just 180 grit. There you go, 180 grit. That's all it is. Don't need no more than that.
it's just a green there yeah that's all nice Right, I'm not gonna put no sanding seal on that because I'm gonna, I'm gonna oil that. Be this wet wood. Be this wet wood. I should put an oil on it. Looking very nice at the moment. There's that. That's where it was. That grain that spiral in the bottom. It's all that grain. Right. Let's see. What can we, uh, can we hold that on there, or can we hold it? Ah, we can do it on our soft jaws. That's all right. I know I'd have one to do it. Sorry? Yeah, it's coming out nice, that. Right, not, oh, no, it's not going to, it's alright. I ain't going to hold on that, I thought it was. There you go, I was, I was wrong, weren't I? Right, okay, so I think we'll go on a wooden one then. Wooden one, yeah, wooden one. It should hold on here. Plenty of room. Oh, plenty of room in the bottom there. If this are open enough, will it? Will it? Will it? Will it? Will it? Will it? I'm willing it. I don't think it's going to. No, it ain't. Look, I'm slightly out. Okay. I just need to take a tiny little bit off of that. So I'm going to do that with the drawers open. And it should should be alright. It might not be. It might be. Um, <laughs> what? Right, I'm going to use a spindle gouge. Let's see. Let's see what it does. It might blow apart on me. I want to do it with it open because I want to keep it for the circle. Right now, I've got to go a tiny little bit more. Okay, go watch because I'm getting close to one of the screws on there. Obviously, I didn't put the screws in all in line, but there you go. Keep that as a slight dovetail as well, see? I can keep that slight dovetail to it, like so. There we go, we're done. That's popped straight in there. That's in a dovetail, and there we go, we've got it in our wooden jaws. And because I've done it with the jaws open, it's made it a circle at that point, see? It's made it, um, like I say, perfect circle, but at that at that point, so it shouldn't do any marking or nothing. Right, there we go, and we're going to go to a, a small spindle gouge. That one. Everything feels good. Bring that round to an angle like that I want it at. It makes it easier, see, for me to get in, otherwise I can't get in there.
Remember, be careful because this is end grain steel we're cutting. Oh, went in and put a little hole there. Where that pith bit is in the middle, where it was. There you go. I don't need to do any fancy lines on that because I've got them already there. Nature's already done it for me. See that divine interference again. Sorry, I was talking a bit loud there, weren't I? I must talk quiet, otherwise the microphone picks it up so much. And I mustn't swear neither because you'll hear it. And I mustn't say things about Lisa because she can still hear me. She's got bloody good hearing. She's like an elephant, I tell you. I, I thought I could whisper and talk about her to you guys, but I can't because she can still hear me. I mean, she can say things about me when she's standing next to me and I can't hear her. Right, okay, that's it, that's done. Sorry, I wasn't going to put any finisher. I was, I'm going to put a bit of oil on that. Oh, look at that. And that turned out lovely. Not that one. Right, and yes, because we've done that and I've done it at the perfect circle. No marking. No marks on that. Right, what lovely little end grain bowl. There we go. Right, that was just a, a quick, well, quick for me, really, guys, you know me, bloody hell, talk for England, come on. Right, okay, let's put a little bit of oil on that. I'm going to use this finishing oil, because it'll give it a little bit of a, a colour as well. It just, I don't, know, I don't think it needs a lot doing to it. And what I'm going to do for that, I've still got a little bit of pith right in the middle in the bottom, but it's end grain, I can't really help that. A bit of sawdust went in there, why not? Right, okay. I'm gonna oh yes, yeah, give it a nice little bit of colour. Look at that. All I'm doing is oiling it because like I say I don't want to put waxes on it, it's still a bit damp, but the oil won't stop the won't stop it drying out. I don't find it does, I find it's alright. Anything you got to watch, if you've got any dirt on your hands, it does tend to come off on it. Right, so. There we go, that's going to crack on the bottom, because I've still got the pith right on the bottom. But I've just done that for showing, doing an end grain bolt, and how to hollow it with the carbide. Let me take this off. There we go, how to hollow it with the carbide. And there we go, lovely. Yeah, I've got that pith is right in the centre there. So, hmm. Yeah, I might even end up mounting that, taking that out and putting a little different colour plug in the bottom. That could be something to do. That could be quite nice, couldn't it? Do that. But anyway, there we go, guys. Little end grain pot. Bowl. It's a little bowl, actually. It's not a pot. It's a bowl. There you go. Right. I'm going to turn something else next. See you on the next one, guys. Toodle pip. Bye, John.